In the early hours of the 21st of April 1509, Henry VII died at Richmond Palace. Henry VII's death was kept secret for as long as possible to allow the mechanism of a change in governance to occur. In the early hours of the 21st of April 1509, Henry VII died at Richmond Palace. Henry VII was the first of the Tudor monarchs, so he established, if you like, the Tudor dynasty. He was succeeded to the throne by his son, Henry VIII. Henry was not the uh, original heir to the throne. That had fallen to his elder brother, Arthur, who had died seven years prior to their father. Their mother, Elizabeth of York, Henry VII's wife, had died in childbirth the following year after Arthur. And so Henry VII had lived without his wife for six years um, and they were very close. He had mourned her loss severely. Henry is buried alongside his wife at Westminster Abbey in what is known as the Henry VII Chapel. Interestingly, Henry is the first person to have been buried at Westminster in a vault as opposed to in the tomb chest that you see above ground. There were multiple designs put forward, but Henry VIII, his successor and son, chose one in the Renaissance style by an Italian sculptor called Pietro Torrigiano. There is an effigy of Henry VII, very lifelike, so likely to be his death mask, in the Abbey collection, which you can see uh, if you visit the Abbey. So Henry VII was the first of the Tudor monarchs, having beaten Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. Now, the Tudor claim to the throne was tenuous, but that has not stopped them enduring in our collective conscious and being... A I mean, they are a very, very interesting dynasty to study, uh, to follow in the footsteps of, and they had a huge impact on the country and our landscape, especially, of course, Henry VII's successor, his son, Henry VIII. Henry VII's death was kept secret for as long as possible to allow the mechanism of a change in governance to occur. So, of course, the death of Henry VII also marks the ascension to the throne of Henry VIII. Henry VIII was 18 when he came to the throne and there was a promise of freshness and a, a new era. His father, Henry VII, had been a ruthless administrator and ruthless um, to the point of fining people for made-up things. Um, and he had left the coffers in a very good state, but his methods had been unpopular. So Henry VIII coming to the throne was a time of hope. Henry VIII being such a larger than life figure in history and his impact being so great means that I think uh, we can sometimes lose Henry VII uh, between him winning the Battle of Bosworth and, uh, and him dying. There is a fabulous book, you know I love to recommend books. Um, this is Thomas Penn, uh, The Winter King, The Dawn of Tudor England, and I would thoroughly recommend um, reading that to get some context around the reign of Henry VII. So what had, become, what had come immediately before the reign of Henry VIII, why Henry VIII was uh, hit the, you know, it was so welcomed onto the throne and um, why it was seen as the dawn of a new era. So Henry VIII came to the throne on the death of his father, so became king um, on the 21st of April 1509, uh, and he didn't have his coronation though until June of the same year. Henry VII was 52 years old at the time of his death and is believed to have died of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm.